Hello everyone, welcome to another video in the AWS database series. My name is Carlos Robles. I am a solutions architect specializing in database technologies here at AWS. The title of this video is how to streamline database migrations to Amazon RDS for SQL Server using PowerShell. I will start with a brief introduction to the AWS developer tools portfolio, then discuss about the different options you have to manage and deploy your Amazon RDS resources. And finally, through a demo, we will see how you can migrate your databases using these native tools that are available to us using PowerShell. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's have a look at the agenda. The first topic is about options to deploy and manage Amazon RDS for SQL Server. And speaking about options, the next topic is about the multiple ways you can migrate databases from your on-premises environment into AWS. Then I will talk about a migration strategy example you can adopt when you are leveraging backups and restore already. And finally, I will show you how to leverage the AWS tools for PowerShell and the SQL Server module, combining both of these tools to migrate databases without leaving the PowerShell ecosystem. There are different ways to deploy and manage Amazon RDS for SQL Server. If we look at this, this slide and we focus on the far left, our first option is the Amazon RDS Management Console, which is a graphical user interface that you might be familiar with already. But if you're looking to automate some of our workloads, you can leverage the AWS CLI or Common Line Interface, or also the AWS Tools for PowerShell for this purpose. But if you are a developer, you can also use the AWS SDK or the AWS CloudFormation templates for the same purpose. Okay, let's have a quick look at the AWS Developer Tools portfolio. As you can see, we have different tools for different purposes. If you are into the development of a CICD pipeline, you can leverage the different CICD tools here. If you are into the provisioning uh, infrastructure as code, for example, you can leverage the AWS CloudFormation or the AWS CDKs. Um, more importantly, take a look at this. We have CLI and description tools, and this is what I will be focusing today, using the AWS CLI and tools for PowerShell to perform a migration. Speaking about the AWS Toolkit for PowerShell, there is two available flavors, the one for Windows PowerShell and the second for PowerShell Core that you can use for Linux or Mac OS base machines. You can download the installer or MSI installer for Windows, or you can install this PowerShell module directly from the PowerShell gallery. All right, let's have a look at the different migration options. Your data is not locked in Amazon RDS for SQL Server. There is many ways you can move data to and from to your Amazon RDS instances. You can leverage back files to save and restore databases. You can also use the publishing wizard to export flat T-SQL files and import them using SQL command. For more advanced use cases, you can leverage the AWS database migration service because this tool specializes in achieving near to zero downtime migrations, but you can also use it to deploy read replicas of your master database on a separate region. You can also explore the AWS market where our ISB partners offer third-party data movement solutions and tools that might help you. And finally, you can use SQL Server replication through push subscriptions. RDS also allows you to backup and restore using back files, providing you access to the SQL Server native backup functionality. This is commonly used to restore from on-premises or easy to SQL Server backups into an RDS instance. You can backup and restore directly from an S3 bucket. It also supports compression and multi-file backup and restore. To enable the native backup restore in your RDS for SQL Server instance, you need to do the following. Create a new Amazon S3 bucket or use an existing one. Create an AWS IAM role to grant RDS access to your S3 bucket or a specific folder. Then attach the IAM role into your RDS instance using option groups. 
Then you can use SQL Server Management Studio to call the stored procedures that expose the backup file from Amazon S3. But this time, I'll be doing this operation using PowerShell. Okay, so let's have a look at the SQL Server Native Restore from S3. You can restore full differential log backups. You can also use the multiple file restore, but there is a limitation of 10 maximum files. A single file cannot exceed the limits of 5 terabytes on S3. You cannot restore databases that are larger than 16 terabytes. You can use the recovery or not recovery option and it also supports compression. In order to restore a database, you need to call the RDS Restore Database Store Procedure and I will show you an example how you can do it. Here is an example of a native backup restore strategy migration. As you can see, here is a full backup that is being copied into S3. Then this backup file is being restored into RDS. Then imagine you have a differential backup that is taken every day. You can leverage this backup following the same process of copying and restoring them to RDS. Then you can also use log backups. You can upload those backups into S3, restore those backups, and whenever you are ready, you can perform the cutover from your own premises environment to RDS. Okay, so let's take a look at the demo. If you recall from the slides, I mentioned that there are a few requirements that you have to put in place before start using uh, these SQL Server native backup feature on RDS. The, so the first one is to have an S3 bucket. In this case, I have my S3 bucket and I have this folder called migration and here's where I will be storing the backups Then let's take a look at my database instance uh, my database instance is called OctanDB and this is the only one as you can see I don't have any other instance if we click on the database instance here and I scroll down to the manage IAM role I can see there is a role that is assigned to my instance. The role is called RDS S3 integration and the feature that is tied to this role is S3 integration. So that makes sense, right? I have my S3 bucket, I have the integration. But this integration is possible only through enabling this feature on an option group. So if I modify my instance, um, I won't be changing anything by the way I just want to show you what I'm talking about so if I scroll down to additional configuration here I see that the database parameter group is the default but the option group for my RDS instance here is different it's not a default it's dmw sql server se 2019 so if I go further and check my option group I see that my option group in question has different associated database instances and snapshots so Octane TV is here and the feature that is enabled through this option group is the SQL Server Backup Restore here's the IAM role and here's the IRN assigned to this role so that confirms that my configuration is already in place so I can start taking backups um, full backups natively on RDS or I can use my S3 bucket to copy backups from my own premises and restore those backups into RDS so let me jump into my bastion host so I have this bastion host uh, this is not the production on premises in SQL Server but I'm connected uh, to my SQL Server on premises here it is called DMW Windows and I have my RDS instance. As you can see, I have three different versions of the AdventureWorks database. I am interested to migrate the AdventureWorks small database. If I check here on RDS, this database doesn't exist yet. So let me jump into PowerShell because this is the goal, right? To leverage PowerShell to make these migrations easier for you. There are a few requirements to use the AWS PowerShell module. Of course, you need to have the module installed. 
I already installed the module, but also you will need some credentials. You will need credentials for, for your source and you will need credentials for your RDS instance. I already create those, created those credentials and also I set up my AWS CLI credentials. So I created a profile called called admin so you can see my admin profile is assigned and this is what i'm using to manage my aws resources from my remote um, bastion host my s3 bucket um this is just a variable just to point to the s3 bucket and the the database that i am interested to backup and copy the backup to s3 so let's go ahead and check our s3 bucket make sure i got the right name so yeah dmw sql server backups is the name so what i'm going to do next is really simple i am going to to use the sql server module for powershell to take a backup from here so i'm going to take a full backup of my uh, adventureworks small database right here with compression enable and this backup was written really quick because it's a small database. But if I want to double check that, I have my um, sh file shared directory here. I see my backup was written to the location as expected. Now, I have this backup and I can I can jump into the console and authenticate to the console from this bastion host and up upload the file. But the goal is to make things easier for you so you can leverage these common led from the AWS tools for PowerShell that will help you to grab that backup file and push that backup file into an S3 bucket. So as you can see, I just declined de the name of my bucket, the backup file I'm interested to, to upload. Um, here's my, um, my folder. It's called migration, the name of my backup file. As so always, it is asking for the credentials that I already created. So my profile is already done in the region. So if I execute this fragment of code, it is going to push my backup. So it's done. Let's take a look and make sure it was successfully copied to S3. So here's here's here is the S3 bucket. Let's refresh here. And there you go. Here is my backup. If I click on my backup, I will be able to see the properties. And here is my Amazon resource name. This is going to be uh, required for RDS to use this backup as a source to restore that database. That would make sense right now. Let me jump back to my Bastion host. Let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio and let's take a look at this. So I'm going to, by the way, I am connected to my RDS instance here. So this is my RDS instance. And I am going to use this store procedure called RDS Restore Database. And it is very easy, as you can see, it is just a matter to say, okay, this is the name of a database. Here's the ARN path so let's paste it where my backup file is stored so this is kind of the path for my backup and the type of backup that i want to restore is full so let's go ahead and execute this this is going to create a task as you can see the task is being created and the task type is to restore a database and the database name here is so if I want to keep track of what's going on, I just need to run another store procedure called RDS task status. And this store procedure will return me with the latest information about this um, RDS task. So let's execute it. And it says that the task number 16 is a restore of a database. The database name, the light cycle says that it's in progress. So yeah. This is going to take a few seconds, but if in case you want to really understand what's going on with your SQL Server, you can always read the error logs using the RDS admin, DVO, RDS read error log, saying, give me the latest log for SQL Server. 
As we can see from the log, it says that my database, Adventure Works Small, is available now, was uh, synchronized. I have uh, a multi AC deployment, so that's probably why it took a little bit uh, of time to restore because it needs to copy the database and um, restore it on my standby instance. Let's take a look at my task once again. And yeah. It is almost done. Okay, so I'll pause the video here. So let's take a look at the task. Should be completed by now. And indeed, it was successfully completed. So the database has been to work small was restored into my RDS instance. If I refresh my database list here, I see Adventure Works Small was uh, successfully restored. So this is how you can leverage the existing SQL Server module and the AWS tools for PowerShell to take backups from a remote server from your on-premises SQL Server environment and push the same backup file into S3 for later be restored into an RDS using the native backup and restore process from SQL Server. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this was helpful and you are able to apply what you learned in your environment. Enjoy the rest of your day and as always, happy cloud computing from everyone here at AWS. Bye.